In this episode, I take my boat, White Shadow, out of the water, ready for her refit. It's time for the battle to commence, and Rust must die. Now in the marina at Pangarai, New Zealand, my boat White Shadow is a steel boat and uh, having sailed halfway around the world, it's now ready for some love and care and is about to come out of the water. This is probably the smallest tow by the smallest yacht that I've ever seen. Gotcha. Okay, so I've been doing lots of work today. I actually got a full day in today. Uh, doing all the rust spots, well, some of them anyway, not all of them, down the side of the boat, working out of the dinghy actually, using a power tool, which is not a good idea, but it had to be done. Uh, then one of the yard hands came down because I'm coming out of the water tomorrow, and he said, my boat is too high. I've got to take down the, uh, the windmill, um, the turbine there, and I've got to take the aerials down, which is a bit of a pain as if I haven't got any, enough to do, you know. But uh, she won't fit in the crane properly. Uh, uh, it's either that or take out the uh, forestay. And I don't want to do that. Well, not yet, anyway. So, the mast will come down. So, got to do that now. I was going to change all this stuff up here anyway. This is uh, the make-do thing that I did after the last time uh, when it fell down. <laughs> so... Uh, this is an excuse to take it out and do it properly this time. Ten minutes later, it's not so bad. I've got these two down. This one actually is no longer used. I can actually uh, take it off. A uh, simple bracket, uh, bolts undone and down it comes. The next one is a little bit uh, trickier, but easier if you see what I mean. Easier because theoretically all I got to do is pull this pin. This bracket comes in half and the whole thing is free. And then the tricky bit is getting it down. I have to fold it down onto that deck without dropping it in the drink. Hmm, I've just realized it's not going to fold down. It, the, the thing is actually mounted behind what's in front of it there, which is the outboard engine. After a lot of hard work and a lot of messing around, finally got the aerial and the wind generator down. Move of the boat this morning. It's always a frightening thing when you get the boat lifted out of the water. Right, you tell me when. Am I going in stern first over there? And the look on my face of worry is genuine. This, for any boat owner, is the most nervous part of owning a boat. Seeing it come out of its natural element, out of the water, and hang in strops in midair like this. It really does have your uh, heart in your mouth. nerve-wracking thing for a boat owner to see his boat hanging in the air like that. It's not quite over yet, but they're going to clean the bottom now. All the stuff that's on there is from here, from this river. And my mate over there, he's going to do it. <laughs> I'm keeping out of the way. Now she's 
she's out of the water like that, I'm looking at her in a, in a different way. And I'm thinking, I've come halfway around the world in that boat. Halfway around the world. Yeah, I think I'm proud of myself. Why not? That boat has gone halfway around the world. And she deserves a bit of love and care, and that's what she's going to get over the next few weeks. Months, probably. They, uh, they put me in the corner of the uh, yard because they were frightened about all the rust that's going to come off the boat, that's going to end up on some of the other boats here. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm worried about it as well. I've got to be very, very careful when I get that rust off. It's actually faster than when she sails, I think. That's why I had to take the wind generator down and the big aerials, just to get that little bit of clearance. There's not much left there. As the Shadmeister was put into position into what would be her cradle and her home for the next few months and Akil came down to rest, I sighed uh, a sigh of relief. At this point, got to say uh, thanks to Mo and Carl for doing a great job looking after me uh, and taking care of uh, Shaddy for me like this. Just looking at some of this, you can see there, this is... Uh a thin coating of the epoxy that's over the, the whole hull. It's broken away, that's okay there, but some of the other places it's through to the steel. In fact, I think it's through to the steel there. Finally, when the guys had finished their work and they rolled back the hoist, I could relax. Time to do something different. More boaty stuff coming up in the video, but first thought I'd take a little walk. Taking a walk in the woods this morning. I had to try and find a waterfall. Fungari waterfall. It's supposed to be pretty magnificent and it's somewhere down this trail. Back on the trail again. There are some very cool trails here. Long time before I got to this part of the world, I went to a meeting in Panama with representatives from the New Zealand Tourist Board got a leaflet, a booklet kind of thing of this area and it featured a photograph of a bridge with this massive waterfall behind so I'm on a mission to find that bridge dodging tourists on the way down here but this is spectacular, I just have to blank them out of my head Imagine I'm here by myself. Tourists, 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 tourists. Great place to talk to the camera. <laughs> Great place for lunch. You go there, you go there. Yeah. The thing of it is, at about this time of the journey, I could really do with taking a leak. The old bladder's full. Um, and back in the day when I was a boy, you just did it in the woods, you know. There's so many tourists out here. You didn't um, disrobe to do anything around here. <laughs> Somebody's about to leap out at you with a camera.
I'm actually tempted to chomp that, you know. I don't know why I've got this strange compunction to jump. It's not suicidal, it's the, the sort of British hooligan thing that, uh, that which nobody else does in the world. Walks in the forest are all very well and very nice, but back in the boatyard a rusty boat awaited me. The work wasn't going to get done by itself. Got a lot of de-rusting to do, but the problem I've got at the moment is I can't tell what's rust and what's rust staining. So I've got a solution of phosphoric acid. I think it's about uh, 1 to 15, something like that, uh, with water. Uh, on a sponge and very carefully just wiping it onto the surface and that works as a, a hull cleaner because it's a de-ruster hull cleaner as opposed to just neat phosphoric acid which you don't really want to be putting on your hull. Also does a nice job on the stainless steel. Can take a little while, could let it do its magic but that's particularly bad. starting to go now, you can see. And there you go. It slowly works its magic after about 10 minutes and uh, it's all gone, or most of it. I'll get the rest later. Yeah, there you go, look at that. Of course, that's just cosmetic. The real work is on top and that's where the rust has got to actually be killed. I always find it amazing just how many tools it takes to do a particular job. There are some nice cars here in New Zealand. The only trouble is they keep parking them under my boat and I'm so worried I'm going to get rust or some acid on them or something like that. Oh well. As you can see, work is well underway. Nice view of the river although it be from a car park. Always had constant problems with these scuppers. The slots under the rail are too small and as you may remember flying fish get caught in them so the deck gets awash with flying fish but not only that they tend to rust like hell for some reason I don't know why they just rust. I've now treated all of them. There's a bit of rust staining there, but um, I've had to chisel away mostly the corners and the underside of the slot, underside at the top of the slot there, uh, rust like hell, and uh, it's very difficult. And I bought a thing called a Dremel. It's one of these uh, hobbyist drills, little miniature thing, which has uh, pretty much done the job for me. I've got to beat off all of the uh, rust on the deck. That is going to be a major nasty, nasty job. And I'm so worried about uh, people being too close to the boat. They did put me at this side of the yard to keep me away from everybody, but everybody keeps coming to me. Next job today is a to try and get rid of the chain. I should have actually done that first because it's going to make a damn mess. Uh, and then take the top of the anchor locker uh, lid off. There's a lot of staining on that fuel canister there, which tells me there's rust underneath the anchor. This part of the boat gets a lot of abuse because it's right at the front uh, it gets a lot of um, aerated uh, seawater salt water with air in it which is just perfect for rust as it flies over the boat when uh, I'm going through the sea and as you can see uh, it's certainly made a mess of the place I've lost count of the amount of times I've done this and redone it there's a lot of rust here that's been treated now I'm using a local product which has been recommended to me. I hope it works because I don't want to have to do this again for a while. Got the top off, but now that's got to come out of there. And let's see, this is the bit that you don't want to have. <laughs> We're at the end of the chain. <laughs> Oops, I'll be careful here. And it does this. Hello! Don't want to be losing your anchor chain at sea. Luckily we're not at sea. 
lot of rust in here but what can you expect it takes a lot of uh, beasting as we say um, you know chain coming in here normally there's pads on the floor on the on the bottom here but even so um, yeah rusty chain salt water pouring in here the front of the boat is always going to be the worst and it's getting to this and unfortunately I think there's rust underneath here which is the mounting for the winch now, I'm going to change out the winch but I'm having trouble getting the one I want here in New Zealand so uh, Lofrens if you're listening uh, you need to get some of your winches down into New Zealand because people want them and they can't buy them a deserted boatyard everybody's locked up and gone home the shadows are long that can mean only one thing it means it's getting near beer o'clock and I've had a long day I've been digging holes in the uh, deck as you might know uh, Shaddy is uh, sheathed in epoxy a lot of epoxy uh, if there's a bit of it they call it filler when there's lots of it it's called fairing she's got a lot of fairing and uh, what happens is it cracks in the heat uh, salt water gets in and it rusts then you've got to chip it off and that's what I've been doing today and then you've got to kill the rust I've got most of it off and I'm going to kill it with some chemicals <laughs> I'm really tired these are some of the ones that I treated before and are rusting through again it was only a stop gap nothing more because I didn't have the materials now I've dug out you can see the depths there of the filler um, I dug out the filler back uh, the rust was all scaled knocked all the scale off there's still some there you can see it in the pitting that the metals pitted uh, it's not easy to get it all out so I don't think I'm even going to try the problem is I can't make a lot of mess I have to be very careful here as you see I've done all of these today and um, it's hard work various methods to a keep the sun off me and b keep the rust from going down into the yard or on top of people's cars or onto people's boats that's the frightening thing recommended this by uh, a friend of mine so this is the best part of the day now i'm putting on some of this uh, rust killer it's supposed to be the bee's knees the dog's bollocks and uh, it seems to do a good job so far but this will go black in a minute this will go black um, you can see it's starting to go there see this one I've just done that's gone black already that's turning the rust into iron oxide here's some stuff that I did earlier you can see that's black already that's where one of the stanchions goes on I had to take a lot of them off because there was rust behind them um, and I'm considering that that rust now is dying under that coating of nasty chemicals, which is good. Next to go is another coating of that. And then we go with two part paint, two pack paint, uh, epoxy paint to seal it all up. A couple of layers of that before we put the filler on. And then I'm doing a new anti-slip all over the deck. Got all the tools back down uh, for the night. Um, that's it. Okay, I've got a thirst uh, bigger than a kangaroo's jock strap right now, so uh, I'm gonna have a nice cold beer and then uh, more of the same tomorrow. Oh, that poor man having to do all that work in the hot sun without a beer. Hope you enjoyed that video. More boaty stuff in the next one coming up soon. Don't forget to subscribe, it's absolutely free, and press the notifications bell to be told every time there's a new Sea Dog video. Cheers.